You're listening to The Upland Rookie, a podcast presented by Upland Brits. What's going on, rookies? And welcome to episode 29 of the Upland Rookie Podcast. I'm your host, Will Larson. And as always, this is presented by Upland Brits. Also brought to you by Yukonuba Sporting Dog, Trinity Bretons, Gunner Kennels, Onyx Hunt, and Pointer Traditions. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 29. Uh, I can't believe we're almost to episode 30. Uh, these last few months have flown by um, way too fast. <laughs> just way too fast. Uh, but f- very, very grateful and uh, just very excited for where we're headed. Uh, excited and just thankful for the past 29 conversations I've got to have with uh, so many amazing people um, on and off the podcast. That, that's the thing. On the podcast, I've gotten to meet some incredible and talk with some incredible people. But outside of the podcast, the the direct messages and the phone calls, uh, people I'm engaging with outside of the podcast is really, really fun. And um, just thank you. Thanks for engaging with me on that on that level. Uh, when I started this podcast, it's, it's really kind of what I wanted to do is have a, have a space to uh, connect with more upland hunters, chat bird dogs, hunting, um, all that good stuff. And, and it's, it's really done that. And so um, keep it up. Keep uh, subscribing to the podcast. Share it with your friends. All that good stuff. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and thanks for sticking with me. 29 episodes. Here we go. Um, I'm seeing a lot of wild bird hunting photos out there. And uh, it's making me a little jealous. Not gonna lie, it's making me a little jealous out there. Um, I'm headed to Nebraska tomorrow morning. Um, I'm excited. I've I've been hearing mixed reports on bird numbers, um, mixed reports on uh, just how jumpy and a little spooky uh, the birds are. But regardless, uh, I'm going. Uh, I was talking with a few guys this weekend, and we were kind of talking about this. And uh, you know, again, some of them have, have put boots in the ground, and it hasn't been great couple guys went a few days without uh you know bagging a bird and it was just really really tough hunting in nebraska and uh <clears throat> an older older gentleman jumped in and, and just said well i'm still going regardless i'm still going regardless of of bird reports or what your buddy says it, it doesn't really matter um and i kind of have that same philosophy sure i can get in my head a little bit and get down and be like oh man you know doesn't sound great but it, we have these bird dogs. We're not going to sit at home and, and not do anything with them. And so I, I was just, I just wanted to share that with you guys of, you know, regardless of what, what uh, articles or reports you're reading about numbers. Um, to me, it's always better to get out there, have fun. You never know what's going to happen. You never know uh, the spot you're going to be in, how your dog works. Like you could have a killer day. You could have an absolute knockout uh, day. Um, even if you're, you know, your buddy or or you, you heard bad reports. And so, um, we we got into this thing. We're in it. We're in upland hunting. We got the dogs, we got the gear. We might as well get out there, spend a day, day and a half, whatever it might be getting out in the field with your dog. There's, there's nothing better. Um, it's good for the dog. It's good training. It's good work exercise for you, them. Um, so, so don't sit at home. Don't, don't just, just sit at home. And, and just because you, you hear something negative, um, again, at least it's my, <laughs> my thought on it. You might have different thoughts. Um, but definitely do your research, do your scouting, all that kind of good stuff. But, um, so anyways, I'm headed into Nebraska, uh, mix, mix, uh, reports on birds, but I'm still excited. Uh, I have some spots that I'm gonna gonna hit up first on Wednesday, and we'll give it a go. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens, and I'll let you guys know. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, this episode I'm excited for this one. Um, this one's I'm titling this one "Try Something New," um, different than Try Upland. Uh, Try Upland. Uh, we we did an episode with Will Jenkins uh, a while back. Um, that was a really, really fun episode. I encourage you to go back and listen to that one with Will. 
Um, this one's try something new. And uh, I just want to talk about the Nastra trial that I uh, ran this past weekend with my dog, Gage. And um, just encourage you guys, uh, I don't even encourage you guys, uh, share, share my experience. I just want to share what, um, what I took away from the weekend, kind of how it went. And um, again, if you have questions afterwards, hit me up, DM, DM me, um, shoot me an email, whatever. I'd love to, uh, to chat with you further. But um, as you know, probably the last you know, couple months, I've, I've been you know, talking with guests on the podcast and exploring the world of AKC trials, hunt tests, NASTRA trials, all that good stuff. And um, I, was, I was super nervous. You might have heard me on some other episodes. Like getting into this, it can seem intimidating um, at times. Um, the the uh, hunt test I did last year, um, fantastic experience. I loved it. People were great. Um, I just I just had one. No, did I run twice? No, yeah, I just had one run that day. So, um, I wasn't there very long. Like, oh yeah, we got rained out. Uh, we got, a tornado happened, and it was crazy. But um, so I, I wasn't like fully engaged. I would say at that hunt test, I uh, was there kind of quick, and I was super nervous, and everything was a blur. So, um, so I, again, I, I just wanted to go down this road to get my dog into something and, uh, something I can do with my dog. Uh, again, that term extend the season a little bit. Um, and just to, just to have a little fun, get out there, meet some more people. Um, and really just, just test my dog. I, I want to, I don't know if it's, it's the competitive side of me. I want to see how my dog stacks up to other dogs. I want to see what my dog stacks up to a standard and all that stuff just to, um, again, I want, again, personal experience. I want my dogs to be the best dogs. I know they're not, <laughs> but I like, uh, I like that, that style of, uh, of just seeing where they're at, seeing where they're at against other dogs, other handlers, um, all that, all that stuff. So I've been really intrigued, um, by the, the trial stuff over the last several, several months. And, um, I was working with Gage quite a bit. Um, over the summer and uh, was going to go for AKC trials. And um, the more I was working with him, uh, again, I'm, I'm no pro trainer. I put a lot of time time in trying to get him broke uh, steady wing shot fall, which he mostly is. Um, realistically, though, right now, he's, he's broke to shot. So once I shoot, he takes off. And uh, his retrieving, though, that, that's the thing that surprised me over the summer. Um, first couple years of his life, could care less about retrieving and uh, really the retrieving part took off over the summer and early this season hunting and uh, just noticing some of that his solid retrieve um, he wasn't really where I needed him to be um, to compete well in AKC uh, trial so I was considering all those things and taking in information talking with my mentor and uh, really kind of decided to switch gears with him and just uh, try Nastra uh, Nastra, uh, national shoot, uh, to retrieve uh, national shoot to retrieve association, uh, is what that stands for. And, um, I think he could do really well. You know, I had some other people just encourage me and say, yeah, how he, how he works, how he runs his, his skills, like he could do really well in Nastra. And again, I wanted to do something I knew we could do somewhat well in <laughs> somewhat well. Uh, that was, that was my goal. Uh, I didn't, didn't necessarily think we'd win anything. I just wanted to be competitive against other dogs. So um, anyways, so last several months, we're just focusing on getting him ready for his first Nashra event. And um, so we ran it. We did it. Our first Nashra event was this past weekend, and uh, it, it was a blast. It was so fun. Um, and I kind of wanted to just, in this episode, really just break down um, some some key takeaways, I guess, from this event and, uh, and just share a little bit behind the scenes of, of what that was like. But, um, so I'll get into the, to how he did the dog stuff in a little bit. Uh, we'll focus, we'll take a break from Gage. And, uh, I first just want to say the people of this event. Um, again, I already said just my personality. I'm super nervous going into these. I knew a couple people going into this, Andy Taylor, uh, a guy named CJ who runs a sporting dog club here by me. So I knew a couple people, uh, but everyone else is going to be new to me, new experience. And my perception was it's going to be this very like st- uh, the, the people were going to be very standoffish to a newbie and just newcomer coming in and because they want to 
you know, win with their dogs. And it was, that was just my perception. I was just super nervous. Um, was it that way? No, <laughs> it was not that way at all. Um, every dang person I met was so damn friendly that, uh, it kind of hurt. <laughs> it kind of hurt just how friendly these people were. Um, I was meeting people fr- uh, who live in North Dakota, um, Kansas, Colorado, Florida, uh, yeah, all over. People traveled all over for this Nashville event. It was down in Colorado here. Um, so it wasn't super far from me, which was nice. Um, but uh, they were all like, hey, are you Will? Are you the, you're the new guy? And uh, they were all giving me tips and you know asking questions. And it was it was so fun uh, to get to engage with, uh, with some new people and be welcomed in with open arms. Um, so that, that just, that just knocked me off my socks. Um, I was very, very taken aback in a, in a good way of just, uh, how welcoming the community was. And so, um, if that's a struggle for you, if that's a perception you have of, of trials or Nastra or whatever it might be, um, that was not my experience. My experience was so positive with every, every person there. Um, and, and also the, I want to talk about the, the work it takes to run this trial. Um, it was Again, from a, a new person's perspective, it was so well run and organized that you could see every every person had their job, responsibility. Everyone knew the chain of command, who's the trial uh, field marshal and the chair chairman and the bird planner and the, like. Everyone just knew their roles and what they were doing. Sure, it can get a little, you know. Hectic, hectic at time. You're, you know, everyone's trying to keep on a, a good schedule, make sure we're not there too late, all that stuff. And it was just really, just fun to see. Like everyone knew their job, everyone knew what to do, how to run things. How to, it was just a very well-oiled machine. And so I think they have a good structure in place um, of how to put on a, a good trial that's efficient. Um, so that was really fun. Uh, a woman named Kit. She uh, she ran a tight ship. I will say that Kit was fantastic. Uh, judge, she, I don't know what her official role was called, but um, she kind of ran Command Central. she tally up the scores, update the board, make sure the, uh, everyone was running on time, which was a big thing. Um, you know, people always going to her for questions and, you know, what about this or this rule or this? And so, um, Kit, I don't know if you'll ever, you'll ever listen to this, but, uh, thank you just for, uh, for keeping it, this thing, uh, moving s- smoothly. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was really just kind of a side, side note to see of, of just kind of how well this thing ran. Um, judges as well. I'm going to talk on judges for a second. Um, my again perception i'm going to talk about my perception going into this and and what actually happened uh, at the trial uh my perception is you know the judging was kind of loose it was all about like speed and time and the judges were going to kind of be willy-nilly on on how they score a dog and so i was like "Eh, like i want some uh, thinking i want someone to really like judge my dog well like his style intensity and how he works and handles and that's what they did they are, they're not just focused. It's not just all about the fastest time in bird and most birds. I mean, yes, it helps your score, but they really are. Uh, every judge I, I met this weekend really is, is looking through a, a microscope at your dog. They're looking at handling ground cover, obedience, the quality of their finds. How were they on point? Were they intense? Were they kind of lazy on the retrieve? Are they, are they kind of coming directly back to you or are they veering off or they having trouble like they are really picking apart uh your dog in a good way where i feel every score that i saw from my dog and other dogs over the weekend was accurate there wasn't one score i saw that i was like wow that was way off under you know above or low it was very very accurate i think to um again looking at gauge and how he he worked i i, I agreed with every score retrieving fines, uh, all that stuff. And so I was really impressed with the judging system and, and the training, I think that these judges have had. Um, so really impressed just with, um, yeah, with, with their level of detail, uh, of how they're judging your dog. So I, I walked away feeling, looking at a scorecard and, uh, feeling very confident in, in what we received and, uh, having an accurate picture of some things I can work on or, um, you know, things like that with, uh, with my dog. So that was awesome. Um, and just on the scoring system, some of you might be wondering like, well, okay, what are they scoring? I, I kind of touched on it a, a second ago, but, um, 
uh, scoring you on the fines, retrieves, obedience, groundwork, which is like basically the coverage, how they're working, the ground they're covering, how they're doing it efficiently, all that. Um, and then backs. Backs are optional. Um, if you get the opportunity and your dog uh, is able to back, uh, you can bring your dog in for a, a back, um, but you don't have to either. Um, if your dog... S- I think has the opportunity and Dan, don't quote me on the rules. Don't, if you know the rules better than I do, that's great. I'm still learning. But from what I remember, if you try to bring your dog in for a back and your dog sees the other dog on point and kind of blows it off and doesn't back, that's going to be a zero. Um, again, it's not going to get you negative points, but um, you just won't get any score there. Uh, if you do bring your dog in for a back and he, he does it, you know, let's say perfectly, I think it's up to 80 points you could get for a back. So it is an optional point. Um, uh, so Gage is not a great backer. Um, so I, if I saw another dog on point, I would try to kind of steer Gage away from that scenario and just go work on more fines. Um, again, those are even worth more points. So I thought, hey, if that's not a strong suit, I'm not going to waste time with it, trying to get him to do it. I'm just going to keep go go finding birds. So that was kind of my strategy with that uh, with that piece of the uh, piece of the puzzle. So, um, so those are the categories they are judging on. Um, there's a whole lot other detail, and I will I will try to get a Nastra person on here just to maybe unpack a little bit more of the judging system and scoring because. Um, it's, I mean, there's a lot there with any kind of trial system. There's there's a lot of uh, nuances and components to judging and scoring and all that stuff. Um, so, yes, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because I'll probably get something wrong because <laughs> I was still asking a lot of questions over the weekend. So anyways, um, that's the scoring system. The other thing, um, yeah, competition style, I, I, I really loved um, – it was competitive, but it wasn't. Um, it, it was a happy medium, I would say. It wasn't. You look at someone, another uh, contestant, and their dog. It wasn't like, hey, they're gonna kill me right now. <laughs> like, they're 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 not you know being jerks. And it wasn't. Oh, this is just for fun. It's you know no big deal if my dog does bad. It was right in the middle. It was people. People were competitive where they you knew they wanted to win. You knew they wanted to do well with their dog. It, you could see it. You could feel it. But it also, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't to the extreme where it was like unfriendly. It was, hey, you know, good luck out there. Hope you have fun. You know, you know good luck with your dog. It was, it was a very encouraging environment. And so that was, that was really nice to see. But that competitive side, guys, it was, it was fun. Is it better while bird hunting? I'm not even going to compare the two. They're, they're, I'm not trying to compare the two even. Um, it, this is something totally different from wild bird hunting. So, so don't mix these up and say, oh, you know, your dog can't be, can't do trials if they wild bird hunt or vice versa or anything like that. They're just different things. This is something you choose to do. And it's, I think it's fun. It's a blast. You get to test your dog a little bit. That's different than wild bird hunting. It, it just is. And I, and I don't think there's, I don't know. That's just my, my view on it. Um, Okay, talked about judges, scoring, competition. Oh, good dogs. Um, really, really got to see some great dogs out there this weekend. Um, saw a few Britneys, uh, lots of short hairs, a couple wire hairs, and what else? Wire hairs. Oh, a couple setters, of course. And uh, what else? Oh, pointer. Yeah, a couple, couple pointers. Um, so that was fun. That was really fun to see different breeds out there, how they worked, how they were handled. Some dogs were, were amateurs like uh, Gage. Some dogs were, you know, in the open division. And you could just see, you could see differences. You could see difference in, in handlers, you know, more experienced handlers versus new handlers like me. Like it was really, really good to see um, a s- whole spectrum of, uh, of styles and, and dogs and breeds and traits and all that stuff. Um, and that was, that was something you're not going to get to see. Um, a lot of, unless you, you do one of these trials, you get to see this concentrated effort of all these different breeds and handlers together, and you can really see um, some unique uh, traits and, and breeds. And so that was really, um, really a fun experience to see. Uh, the wire hairs worked really well. Um, the short hairs, man, there's so many freaking short hairs. <laughs> My God, they were, they were really good too. 
Um, so yeah, so those those are some of the things I wanted to just touch on uh, with the trial. Um, I I could probably go into a lot more with this, but again, without getting too nitty gritty into some of the Nashua rules and things like that. Um, I really want to maybe pull someone else on here that has a way more experience than that. And, uh, but anyways, overall experience was fun. It was positive. Um, it got me excited for more. So if that tells you anything, it got me, you know, just pumped up to, to do another one and, uh, and keep going. So, um, uh, real quick. So Gage, he, let's see, Saturday, Saturday, he finished second in amateur. And so he'll get, uh, two points towards his amateur, uh, champion uh, or, or title. So he'll get two points for that. And then Sunday, um, our first run on Sunday was was pretty bad. He actually went went birdless in the first field. And uh, so I was a little disappointed. Um, he didn't handle great for me. Just kind of had an off had an off run. Um, second field, second run of Sunday. Um, had a fantastic run. I think he scored a seven something, seven something. 718, 719, something like that. Um, had a really good run. Um, so we took first in amateur on Sunday. And then we were, <laughs> this is, I'm kicking myself for this. Um, this is, is partly my fault. I, I missed a bird. Uh, it went down. And if he would have retrieved, so he got points for the find. If he would have retrieved it um, where it went down, uh, we would have got f- uh, full points for the retrieve as well. But I don't know what happened to this bird. It, it, uh, it flew pretty far. Uh, it was still in bounds and he couldn't find it. I don't know what happened to this bird. Uh, so he was looking, looking, looking forever. And uh, finally the judge was he's like, yeah, I don't think he's got it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think he does either. So we left that one, took a zero on that retrieve. And so, um, so anyways, I, for a while, I was holding on to third place in the open. Uh, so I had enough points to actually place in the open division. And so we were, I mean, every run after that, I was like on the edge of my seat, uh, just watching these next dogs to see if we were going to get knocked off or, or if we could hold on to that third place. Um, cause that would, that would qualify him for a bunch of other stuff and get, get some more points towards the open, uh, title. So anyways, I was very excited. People were getting my hopes up too. They're like, Oh man, like, I think you got a chance and all this stuff. So, um, it didn't work out. Uh, a short hair, um, maybe second to last run of the day, third to last run of the day in that field uh, knocked us off. They had a killer run. Uh, I think they got like a high 780 or 790 or something like that. Um, so not by that much. I do feel if I, if I would have, if I would have shot that bird and, or if Gage would have been able to find that one, um, we, we could have maybe held on to that that third place, but, uh, but who knows? So kick myself a little bit for that one. Um, so I think we finished fourth or fifth in the open side, but, um, so, so again, I was not expecting, <laughs> I was not expecting to, to place in that at all. Um, really even in the amateur side, um, I did set my expectations low going into this event. Um, I wasn't even expecting to place or come away with points or anything like that, but, um, thankful for my dog for doing his job and making me look better. Um, so I think we walked away with five points towards our amateur title, um, two from Saturday, three from Sunday. And so, um, yeah, so that's exciting. Uh, definitely was not expecting, uh, any of that. Again, Gage worked well. I, you know, just followed him. (laughs) And really the nice thing about Nashra is it feels very much like hunting. Um, it's just going out for a walk with you and your dog and you're getting some points for it. And so really, I think low barrier to entry, great people, great experience. Uh, you get to watch some amazing dogs be out there with your dog. And, uh, yeah, some of these trials are in the fall. I know they do some in the spring, early summer, depending on your region. So guys, if this is something you want to try and get into, I would encourage you, uh, sign up, uh, for Nashra become a member. I think it's like 75 bucks, become uh, a year, a yearly member. Um, and 75 bucks a year, not a month. So a year, uh, become an Astra member, join a a region. So I'm, I'm part of the Rocky mountain region and there's regions all over the country. And, uh, again, it's a great community of people. Um, another thing to get out there with you and your dog. Again, I'm not comparing it to wild bird hunting. They're very different. I'm not saying one's better than the other or anything like that. So make sure that's clear. Um, but it's just something fun to do with you and your dog. If you want to get down to the trial in the trial realm, trial realm, or, or do, to do anything like that, 
Um, I, again, I've still not tried an AKC trial. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be focusing on those with Win. Um, she's she's just a little bit more built for those trials, and I haven't screwed her up as much as I screwed Gage up. <laughs> so um, I think Win will do do some AKC trials with her. See how that goes. Again, years down the road, we may may transition over to Nastra. We'll see kind of how it goes, but. Um, anyways, guys, I hope that was uh, informative for you. Gives you a little sneak peek, a little behind the scenes um, of the Nashra trial this past weekend. Again, encourage you try something new, whether it's a hunt test, uh, trial, NAVDA, whatever it is, guys, for you, whatever your uh, piques your interest, just try it. You don't have to. Again, I wasn't expecting to even place in anything. I was just expecting to want to try it, see how I liked it. So I encourage you. What is it for you and your dog if you're thinking, you know, you want to try something like this? What is it for you that you want to try? Encourage you, try something new, whether it's this fall, next spring, summer, whatever it is. Uh, Make a plan, ask some questions, get involved. Uh, There's no better thing to do than get out there with you and your dog and uh, put a little extra time, work, effort in, and uh, get them on some birds is, is always a good time in my mind. So. Anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in. I want to again uh, thank my sponsors, Gunner Kennels, Trinity Bretons, Yukonuba Sporting Dog, Pointer Traditions, and On X Hunt. Hey, guys, until next week, if you, don't, if you can't hunt with or own a Brittany, any bird dog is better than no bird dog. Go put some miles on those boots and have fun. Take care.